Today we're going to be looking at DeepSeek R1. Uh, yeah, it's this new AI model that's been causing a lot of buzz lately. We've got some excerpts from a really interesting essay on it. It's called uh, The Rise of DeepSeek R1, A Paradigm Shift in Artificial Intelligence and Its Global Implications. And we're going to unpack it all, like what makes this AI so different and how it's shaking up well, pretty much everything from like the tech world to, you know, global politics. We're even going to touch on the whole like AGI thing, the race to create super intelligent machines. So, yeah, buckle up. It really is remarkable how this one AI model is sparking so many important conversations. You know, it's not just another algorithm. It represents a potential turning point in AI development. Yeah. First, OK, so first things first, what exactly is DeepSeek R1? Why is everyone making such a big deal about it? Well, you know, at its core, DeepSeek R1 is a large language model or LLM. These LLMs are kind of like the brains behind a lot of the AI we see every day. Oh, OK, I get it. Like uh, chatbots on websites and stuff. Exactly. But R1 is different. See, it uses a learning process called reinforcement learning or RL for short. Reinforcement learning. OK, that sounds uh, pretty intense. How does that even work? It's actually fascinating. So unlike most AI models that, you know, gobble up tons and tons of data to learn, R1 learns through like rewards and penalties. It basically teaches itself by trying things out and seeing what works best. So it's like it's figuring things out on its own. That's pretty cool. It is. And get this, the results are incredible. R1 is scoring higher than some of the biggest names in AI on like complex math problems and coding challenges. It's even beating models from, you know, companies like OpenAI. Wow. OK, that's impressive. But like scores are one thing. How is this impacting the real world? What's DeepSeek R1 actually doing out there? Well, let me tell you, when this thing debuted, it sent shockwaves through the entire tech industry. Like NVIDIA, the company that makes those, you know, super powerful chips that everyone needs for AI, their stock plummeted like 17% in just one day. Whoa, 17%, that's huge. What caused that? It's all about the cost. R1 is ridiculously cheap to train, like a fraction of what other companies are spending. Suddenly, you've got this incredibly powerful AI that's also super affordable, and that's a game changer. Yeah, investors must have freaked out. They did. And it's not just NVIDIA. It's like everyone in the industry, from AMD to even like energy companies, they're all scrambling to figure out what to do. Wow. So it's a super efficient AI, and it's shaking up the markets. But there's another aspect to this that I find really interesting. The fact that DeepSeek R1 is open source. So can you explain what that means in this context and why people are so excited about it? OK, so open source basically means that DeepSeek has made the core code of R1 freely available. Like anyone can use it, modify it, build on it. It's a total contrast to like companies like OpenAI who keep their technology very closely guarded. So it's about democratizing AI, making this powerful technology accessible to like everyone. Exactly. Imagine developers, researchers, small startups all over the world suddenly having access to the same tools as the big players. That's the potential of open source. That's a pretty radical shift. And uh, what about the cost of actually using it? I mean, that's got to be a factor too, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So not only is it open source, but R1 is also insanely cheap to use. Their API costs are like something like 30 times lower than their competitors. It's crazy. Wow. Open source and affordable. That's a powerful combination. It seems like DeepSeek is really changing the game, and this all leads us into something else. You know, DeepSeek is a Chinese company, and this open source model they're using has some interesting implications on the global stage, right? You're right. The geopolitical implications here are huge. This is a major win for China in the tech race, especially with, you know, all those restrictions the U.S. has put on exporting chips. Right. The U.S. has been trying to limit China's access to those high-end chips. Mm -hmm. So how did DeepSeek manage to create such an advanced AI without them? Well, they were clever. They stockpiled a ton of those NVIDIA chips before the restrictions really kicked in. And then they got creative with their software. They basically found ways to work around the limitations. That's some serious resourcefulness. What does this all tell us about, like, the bigger picture, the whole U.S.-China tech rivalry thing? It tells us that the landscape is shifting. This isn't a one-sided race anymore. Innovation can come from anywhere, even when there are obstacles. And DeepSeek R1 is a prime example of that. Okay. So we've got this AI that's powerful, efficient, open source, and developed in China. It's shaking up the tech world and causing ripples on the global stage. And this leads us to another big question. What about AGI? You know, the whole idea of machines becoming as smart as humans. Where does DeepSeek R1 fit into all that? Right. AGI, or artificial general intelligence, is the, like, 
holy grail of AI research. We're right. talking about machines that can think, learn, and solve problems just like we do. And with R1's advanced reasoning abilities, some people are saying this is a big step in that direction. So are we on the verge of creating like super intelligence? What do you think? Well, I wouldn't say we're there yet. There are still some major challenges, like the limits of our current computing power, but R1 is definitely pushing boundaries. So it's like a step in the right direction. What happens when our computing power catches up? Well, then things get really interesting and potentially a bit paradoxical because, you know, even though technologies like DeepSeek R1 are making AI more efficient, needing less computing power, this very efficiency could actually lead to an even greater demand for resources overall. Huh. OK, explain that one. It's called the Jevons paradox. The uh -huh. basic idea is that, you know, when we make things more efficient, we tend to use them more. So as AI becomes more accessible and cheaper, thanks to models like R1, we might actually see a surge in its use, which ironically could drive up the demand for computing power even further. Wow, that's pretty mind bending. So DeepSeek R1 isn't just like this cool new tech thing. It's a catalyst for all these bigger conversations about the future of AI, the ethics, the impact on society, and the whole global landscape. Exactly. It's a reminder that we're in uncharted territory here and we need to be having these conversations now. Absolutely. So we've covered a lot of ground, from the technical stuff to the geopolitical and even a bit of AGI. But there's still more to uncover. We'll be back to continue our deep dive and explore what all this means for, well, for all of us. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our deep dive on DeepSeek R1. Yeah, we've covered a lot of ground already with this AI model, haven't we? From its unique design to, like, shaking up the big tech companies and even its potential role in that whole AGI race. It really is remarkable how much one AI model has changed the landscape. Totally. So as we keep going with this deep dive, what else should we think about when it comes to DeepSeek R1 and its potential impacts on like society as a whole? Well, I think a really important area to focus on is the future of work. Yeah. You know, as these AI systems become even more advanced, like R1, they're going to start automating a lot of tasks that humans currently do. Right. That's the big one, isn't it? Yeah. The robots are coming for our jobs. Is it time to panic? Should we all be like hiding under our desks? I don't think panic is the right response. It's not as simple as, you know, robots taking over everything. It's more nuanced than that. Sure, some jobs will definitely be displaced, but AI will also create new opportunities and roles that we can't even imagine yet. So it's not really about AI versus humans, but more about how we adapt and like work with these intelligent systems, right? Exactly. We need to start thinking of AI as a tool, a tool that can help us be more efficient, solve complex problems, and even open up new possibilities. Instead of fearing the robots, we should be figuring out how to partner with them. Right. Use their strengths to enhance our own abilities. Exactly. Think about it. Doctors using AI to help with diagnoses, catching things that humans might miss. Teachers using AI to create personalized lesson plans for each student. Artists collaborating with AI to explore new creative avenues. The potential is huge. OK, that's a much more optimistic picture than, you know, the whole robots taking over scenario. But it also brings up another question. How do we make sure everyone benefits from this? As AI becomes more integrated into our lives, how do we prevent it from, like, making existing inequalities even worse? That's a critical point. Equitable access is crucial. If only a small, privileged group gets to enjoy the benefits of AI, it could create even wider gaps in society. Right. It's not just about the technology itself. It's about social responsibility. How do we make sure everyone gets a chance to thrive in this new AI-powered world? Well, we need to start thinking about things like social safety nets, maybe even exploring ideas like universal basic income to address potential job displacement. And we need to invest heavily in education and retraining programs so people can develop the skills they need to succeed in this new landscape. There's a much bigger conversation than just, you know, robots and algorithms. It's about work, education, the structure of society itself. It's a lot to process. It is. And it's happening fast. DeepSeek R1 is just one example of how rapidly AI is advancing. We're only beginning to understand the full implications of this technology. It's like we're standing at the edge of a new frontier. A lot of excitement and potential, but also like a bit of uncertainty about what lies ahead. Exactly. We need to be excited about the possibilities, but also realistic about the challenges. And that's why these conversations are so important. We need to keep talking about this, exploring both the positive and the potentially negative aspects of AI as it becomes more and more integrated into our lives. It's about being open, being honest, considering all the different perspectives and finding that balance between, you know, embracing the potential of AI 
while also being aware of the risks. I agree. And, you know, we've been focusing a lot on the societal level, but let's shift gears for a moment and think about the impact on the AI industry itself. We talked about how DeepSeek R1 is kind of disrupting things, but how might this impact the AI landscape in the long term? Right. Good point. What happens next? Well, it's still early, but R1 has definitely thrown a wrench into things. A lot of people are wondering if this whole open source approach is going to catch on. For a long time, you know, the AI world has been moving towards consolidation with a few big players controlling most of the technology. Talk about like Google, Microsoft, those guys. Right. They've been pouring tons of money into AI. Exactly. But DeepSeek R1's success challenges that model. It shows that innovation can thrive in a more open and collaborative environment. Now the question is, will this spark a broader shift towards open source AI, or will those big players try to hold on to their proprietary technology? It's an interesting development. You could really shake things up and like make AI technology more accessible to a wider range of people, which could lead to even more innovation. Absolutely. It'll be fascinating to see how things unfold. The tech world moves so fast, doesn't it? Just when you think you understand what's happening, something new comes along and changes everything. That's what makes it so exciting. We're living in a time of incredible technological progress. Who knows what breakthroughs are just around the corner? Right. Like Deep Seek R1 seemingly came out of nowhere and now it's making everyone rethink the future of AI. Yeah. What other innovations are being developed right now that we don't even know about? That's the big mystery, isn't it? It's a good reminder to stay curious, stay adaptable, and keep paying attention. Things are changing rapidly. It's like we're exploring a whole new world full of possibilities, but also, you know, a bit of uncertainty. Exactly. And that brings us back to the core of what we've been talking about. AI isn't just about code and algorithms. It's about humans. It's about our choices. It's about how we shape the future with this technology. It's about using AI's potential to make things better while also being aware of the challenges and recognizing that we all have a responsibility in this, not just the tech experts or the politicians, but everyone. I couldn't agree more. It's a collective effort, and it starts with education, awareness, and a willingness to engage with these complex issues. The more informed we are, the better decisions we'll make. Well said. So as we wrap up this part of our deep dive, what's the one thing you want our listeners to really think about as we move into the final segment? I think the key takeaway is this. DeepSeek R1 is just a piece of a much larger puzzle. It's a catalyst for conversations about the future of AI, about the ethics, about its impact on work and society, and about the global dynamics at play. It's a lot to unpack, but it's important. It's a reminder that we're not just watching this happen, we're a part of it. Every choice we make shapes the future of AI. Exactly. The future isn't set in stone, it's something we create together. And with that, let's move on to the last part of our Deep Seek R1 Deep Dive, where we'll explore the potential long-term impacts of this technology and AI in general on society as a whole. All right, welcome back everyone for the final part of our deep dive into DeepSeek R1. It's been a pretty fascinating journey so far, right? I mean, we've seen how this one AI model is causing shockwaves in industries. It's like pushing the boundaries of what we thought AI could even do. And it's sparking all these conversations about what the future holds. Totally. And now I guess it's time to tackle the really big question. What does all of this mean for society? Like, yeah. how is DeepSeek R1 and AI in general going to change the world? Well, if we kind of zoom out and look at the big picture, I think it's important to remember that AI, like any technology, is essentially a tool. It's not inherently good or bad. It's all about how we choose to use it. Right. So it's not like we're on this predetermined path towards some utopian future or like a dystopian nightmare. We still have the power to shape how this all plays out. Exactly. And that's both exciting and a little bit scary, right? It means we have this huge responsibility to think carefully about the implications of AI, to like anticipate the challenges, and to make sure we're steering its development in a way that benefits everyone. Okay, that's a big responsibility. So where do we even start? Well, I think a good place to start is with the future of work. We've already talked about how AI is probably going to automate a lot of jobs, but the real question is, how do we adapt to that? How do we make sure everyone has a chance to succeed in this new world of work? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing everyone's worried about, right? Will we all be out of jobs? I think we need to be realistic, but also hopeful. Some jobs will definitely disappear, but that doesn't mean there won't be new ones created. It just means we need to change how we think about work, education, and the skills we need to thrive. So instead of trying to hold on to those old jobs, we should be focusing on preparing for the jobs of the future, jobs that, like, might not even exist yet. 
Exactly. And that requires us to rethink our education systems. We need to prioritize things like critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, and adaptability. These are the skills that will be most valuable in an AI-powered world, the skills that are really hard for machines to replicate. It's about becoming lifelong learners, right? Yeah. Constantly evolving and adapting. Right. And along with those changes in education, we need to think about social safety nets. You know, as AI disrupts industries, we need to make sure people have the support they need to transition into new roles or find different career paths. So it's not just about the workplace. It's about society as a whole. Mm. It's a pretty fundamental shift. It is. DeepSeek R1 and the rise of AI is forcing us to rethink a lot of our basic assumptions about like work, education, even our entire economy. Wow, it's a lot to take in. Now we haven't even talked about like healthcare, transportation, art, entertainment, mm. all the other areas that AI could potentially transform. Oh yeah, there's so much to explore. AI has the potential to revolutionize so many aspects of our lives. It could help us solve some of our biggest problems, but it also raises these new ethical questions that we need to be really careful about. It's a reminder that AI isn't just this like abstract thing. Mm -hmm. It's a reflection of us, our values, our choices. We're the ones who ultimately determine how it's used. Exactly. And that realization is pretty powerful. It means we have the ability to shape this technology to make sure it's used for good. Okay. So as we wrap up this whole Deep Seek R1 deep dive, what's the one thing you want our listeners to walk away with? What's the big message? I think it's this. The rise of AI, whether it's Deep Seek R1 or whatever comes next, it's a call to action. It's an invitation for all of us to have these important conversations about the future we want to build. It's time to get involved, think critically, challenge our assumptions, and work together to make sure this powerful technology is used wisely and ethically. It's about embracing the potential while also recognizing the challenges and remembering that we all have a role to play in shaping this new world. Absolutely. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. Thanks to everyone for joining us on this deep dive into Deep Seek R1 and the future of AI. It's been a great conversation. It has. Thanks for having me. And all our listeners out there, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep those deep dives going. Mm -hmm.